Following today's service, go to lifeatsupola.com and fill out our online guest card, and our pastoral team would love to connect with you this week. We are incredibly honored that y'all have joined us for worship today. If you would right now, check in and share our service with your friends and family on your social media feed. Now, here are this week's announcements. Join Vida and Tupelo's Spanish service today at 3 p.m. We are blessed by the ministry of Reverend Armando Loyola and the congregation. This service is a time of word and the preaching of the word of God in complete Espanol. For more information, go to our website and click the Vida and Tupelo link. On Wednesday night, March 24th, will be life groups throughout Northeast Mississippi. These monthly home meetings are gatherings for fellowship, devotion, and prayer. If you've not been reached by a life group leader, connect with Justin and Carrie Fisher or go to our website at lifeatupelo.com slash lifegroups to fill out our life group form to connect you to a group near your location. On Friday, March 19th at 9 a.m. in the main sanctuary will be our weekly prayer meeting led by our prayer ministry team. We're incredibly thankful for those petitioning to God and interceding for all the needs surrounding our church. And finally, on March 26th and Saturday, March 27th at 7 p.m., our Spanish church, Vida and Tupelo, will be holding their annual conference. They will conclude their conference on Sunday, March 28th at 3 p.m. For more information, connect with Reverend Armando Loyola or visit their Vida and Tupelo link on our website. For all updates and announcements, go to our website at lifeatupelo.com. Thank you again for attending today's worship service. Here at Life at Tupelo, we're a church where everyone is welcome, nobody's perfect, and anything is possible. you, but I've come with an expectancy that God is going to move in our midst today. Amen. Did anybody come expecting God to do something in your life? Amen. I don't know about you, but if he's going to give a breakthrough, I want it to be in my family. If he's going to give a financial increase, I want it to be in my family. I'm going to do whatever I can to get the attention of Jesus today. How about you? One way we do that is through our worship. We understand if we draw nigh unto him, he will draw nigh unto to us if we'll lift our hands in adoration lift our hands in praise the presence of the lord will fall in this place he will consume us with his power with his spirit with his anointing and with his authority how how many want that today hallelujah how many want the presence of the lord today amen you may have come into the house of the lord with the weight of the world on your shoulders your hands lifted may be a sacrifice of praise, but if you keep them lifted long enough before you leave here today, I promise you there'll be a there'll be a sign of victory waving in the air saying, Lord, you delivered me. Lord, you brought me out. Lord, I can see clearly now. The cloud is gone. The storm is moving. Lord, I thank you for your blessings. I thank you for your provision. Could you lift your hands to heaven right now? Let's go to him in prayer. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this time we've gathered in your name. We thank you, Lord for each and every individual that's gathered today. Lord, I pray a blessing and increase that would come on each and every family. Lord, I pray for your deliverance, Lord Jesus, to fall in this place. Let the chains of bondage be broken in the power and the authority of your name today. Come on, somebody. Could you clap your hands to the Lord and give him a shout of praise right now? He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Let's worship with them as they sing, doing it all again in the presence of the Lord. Thank you. 
Amen, amen. The scripture mentions, amen, about the Lord passing somebody by. Amen. There were other blind men in the days of Bartimaeus, but they didn't receive their sight. I don't want, to, I don't want that to be my life. I don't want that to be my story today. I don't want it to be said that the Lord was here and he passed me by because my mind was in other places. The wonderful spirit of the Lord is in this house today. Amen. You may be seated if we will continue in this frame of worship today. There is no telling what the Lord will do before we leave this house. A few announcements today for you. Uh, this coming Saturday at 8 a.m. to 12, there is a work day here at the church. This is for men and women. We want to kind of get it ready for Easter. Man, the time's flying in, and Easter's already nearly here. So we want to get the church ready and looking good. So there's going to be a breakfast at 7.30. So if you get here at 7.30, you can have breakfast, and we're all going to work together. It's a beautiful thing. I don't know about you. We had a wonderful time around here yesterday. It's a beautiful thing to see the people of God come together to achieve something. It's a wonderful thing. Uh, in prayer this morning, I, I was just praying, and I was saying, Lord, I'm thankful to be among the people of God today to worship. So be a part of this if you can, and your schedule will allow. We certainly need your help, and that'll be this coming Saturday. Spanish Revival. You know, every that's this coming Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, starting at 7 p.m. nightly. Be a part of this. Choose one of those nights. You know, if it's a children's revival, that's not just for our children. Yeah, it's centered around them, but we want to support our children, don't we? We want to support our youth. We certainly want to support the Spanish ministry. So you may not be able to understand, but I'm going to tell you what you can understand. This being, in the, You can understand the Spirit of the Lord when it begins to move in the house. So be a part of one of these services, if you can, to support our Spanish ministry here at Life at Tupelo. This Wednesday night is our second. How many of you enjoyed the life groups a couple of Sunday nights ago? What a wonderful time that was led by Brother Justin and Sister Carrie. That's this Wednesday night again, so all the team leaders, be sure to reach out and know that, let your teams know that that's this Wednesday night at 7 p.m. There will be one going here if you choose to come here, but be a part and support the life groups. Uh, there's going to be a walk-through shower next Sunday for Jason Madeline. So be a part of that. Bring uh, a gift. And uh, next Sunday for the walk-through shower. Yesterday was a wonderful time, wasn't it? We all came together to honor our pastor. Many of you have approached and, and wanted to continue to give. Somehow you missed it. Let me say this. This is, was one of the most difficult announcements to ever make because we had to keep it on the, on the down low, right? We couldn't announce it in service. The best way to make an announcement is right here or, or uh, on social media. We couldn't do either of those, so we had to send out text, and some of you didn't get those texts. And we had to keep it on. You know, there was a, a flyer, but everything had to be uh, on the down low. So it was very, very difficult to make those announcements, and some of you didn't get them, and some of you have asked about continuing to contribute. We certainly have to get a trailer to haul that around here, right? So... Those of you that want to continue to give, you certainly can. If you could put it in the offering and just note it as, as a birthday gift, uh, it will go to where it needs to go. So thank you. We want Brother Steve to come at this time. We are missions-minded, aren't we? We love Brother Steve. And we appreciate his heart, his spirit for missions. He has a missions moment for us today. Thank you, Brother Dale. I'm certainly uh, same page uh, driving down here I just couldn't get away from the thought of how wonderful it is to be here with you folks and Sister Demetra Bill Gaither wrote a song about how wonderful it is to be a part of the family of God and I was just thinking about all the things that we're doing scattered with spring breaks and good things and bad things and, but we've all come together we had a great day here yesterday I was glad I got to be a part of that. I'm even more glad that I get to be here with you this morning because I know that some of you, all of you, do have those angel wings on your back that you heard about yesterday. If you weren't here, you'll have to ask somebody. But uh, you guys are a missions-minded church, and I'm so grateful for what you do for the cause of the kingdom. Thank you so much for supporting our missionaries, for your 
consistent financial support. I try to be careful to always wear the, the pen of Israel when I'm up here. And I'm so glad to see the Turners with us again this morning. We pray for you guys. We don't just say it when you're here. We, we, we're praying for Israel. We're praying for the Turners. Yeah. We love you guys. Thank you for what you're doing. Um, I continue to hear from you about supporting God file number nine. Thank you all so much for what you're doing. As you know, our goal was to raise at least $100,000 for Bible schools uh, in honor of Bishop James Carney. And I have every confidence that we're going to do that. If you want to be a part of that, if you want to be a part of the blessing that's going to come from that, I encourage you to... Uh, to be in touch about that. Many of you have committed to that effort. If there's anybody else that wants to join us, you, you're welcome. Um, I've been a little bit distracted with uh, some of the things that have been going on, and I want to catch up on some of the stories, just some of the news that's coming in from our missionaries around the world. And uh, so we've heard from Chris and Paula Richardson that they're assuming responsibility for all the uh, islands in the Indian Ocean. Uh, there's They've told us that there's going to be a new work opening soon on the island of Mayotte. Um, the Hadjiks reported baptisms in their church in Zagreb, Croatia, and in the Adriatic Sea. I actually saw a picture being baptized in the ocean. Expect another baptism service soon in Dubrovnik. Uh, Stephen Sherry Smith reported from Guyana that since the beginning of 2020, They've faced a lot of restrictions. Of course, we know about curfews and lockdowns and some of those things, but they've witnessed more than 150 people being baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost during those times. So I think we should thank the Lord for that. Praise God. The uh, Shirley's reported from the Dominican Republic that during the pandemic, they've had more than 100 baptisms around the country, just had 16 people uh, baptized in one day in the church in El Tamarinduin. That's a tongue twister. But they also shared that there was a premature baby that was brought to uh, one of the minister's meetings. And I want you to get this picture because this is just amazing how God works. But the baby actually died being held in the pastor's arms. And can you imagine pastors standing here holding one of your babies and it dies in your arms but you know what they began to call on God and God raised that baby from the dead that's the God we serve praise God the Dones report from Japan that 11 were filled at a rally in Matsusaka and here's a sobering note though from Japan 70% of the pastors in Japan are more than 50 years old so there's an urgent need there as in so many countries for young men to step up and take on leadership responsibilities and again we're back to Bible schools we need Bible schools another neat story about Bible studies is uh, from Okinawa where a lady 20 years ago was taught a Bible study by a co-worker she was recently baptized in Jesus' name. The Wicket's report that in Fiji, during one week of crusades, they've seen 30 filled with the Holy Ghost and 70 baptized. In Bangladesh, 118 have recently been baptized and 51 filled. And the construction on the Bible school in Dhaka is proceeding. 17 were recently baptized in Sierra Leone, 10 in New Zealand. And in Kenya, one of the pastors there went to a refugee camp spent a week teaching those people and at the end of that time he baptized 127 people God filled 109 Amen Praise God Revival's happening In the last six months 669 people were baptized and 1,229 were filled in South Sudan Now if you want to be a part of that then keep doing what you're doing because you guys are helping make it happen Thank you so much Man, well, I was supposed to make a few announcements. I was supposed to take the offering up, so I'm going to get fired if I don't be careful and do my job. There are four ways to give here at Life at Tupelo. You can give at the hospitality desk.
You can give at life at Tupelo.com, certainly to the, through the te Faith Teams app, or you can text to give. We make it easy. Just be faithful to God, and He will be faithful to you in your giving. Amen. How many of you understand there's no other name? There's, we're fixing to worship again and go into our second set. No other name. Aren't you thankful that you know the name of Jesus? The angel told Joseph, you shall call his name Jesus. They didn't come up with that. That name came from heaven. And whatever you need today, you will find it in that name. Let's worship with them as they lead us.
Come on, can we lift up the name of Jesus in this house right now? Hallelujah. Can you lift up the name of Jesus in this house right now? I began to look over the names of God's this morning as I was preparing for this part of the service. And from A to Z, Allah, Buddha, Ceres, Dagon, you can find names of God that people have worshipped until they're in their grave and never had a response. But when you call on the name Jesus, the only one who's by his stripes are ye healed. The only one who can save you from yourself today. When you call on the name Jesus, matter of fact, can we stand in reverence of that name this morning all across this house? We just sang about the most powerful name that we have ever uttered out of our mouth. The name Jesus has the power to save, to heal, and to deliver. The name of Jesus. Why don't you just speak his name right now into the atmosphere? Won't you speak his name right now and, and, and over your house right now, over your finances? Jesus, come on, I hear it. Jesus, he's the only one who can save us. He's the only one who can deliver us. Allah can't do it. Buddha can't do it. Ceres can't do it. Dagon has failed over and over and over again. But Jesus is still faithful. Jesus is still a healer. He's still a restorer. He's still a deliverer today. That's why we've gathered in his name. There's no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. The name of Jesus is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and are saved. Hallelujah. If you've come in here with the weight of the world on your shoulders today, can I tell you of one who can make you feel safe? His name is Jesus. Run to him today. Run to him today. He's the author and the finisher of your faith. Hallelujah, we want to move into miracle opportunity right now. If you need God to do anything in your life, I said anything in your life, big or small, insignificant or very significant, I want you to step out of where you are and give God an opportunity to be God in your life today. Give him an opportunity to perform a miracle. If you make a move toward him, he'll make a move toward you. By the name of Jesus, let healing virtue flow to Brother Dana Soper right now. If you need God to do anything, come on church, raise your hands if you're in good spirits today and your faith is high. Let's pray for those that need a move of God. Lord Jesus, we come to you right now. Lord, we're thankful for another opportunity to be in your presence. God, we're humbled by your name, the very mention of your name, demons tremble. And God, we are standing in the presence of an almighty God. Lord, we're asking you right now to reach down and touch every body, every soul, and every mind, God. I pray, Lord, right now that you would break the chains of bondage, Lord, that you would heal financially, Lord, that you would touch physically, God, whatever the need may be. We're asking you, oh Lord, to show your glory and show your might in this place today. We've come, oh Lord, gathered in your name to lift you high above every other name there is oh god we've come to lift you above everything lord jesus in our life every mountain every trial every storm oh god we speak your name we speak your name we speak healing and restoration we speak deliverance oh lord we speak healing over everybody we take authority and dominion right now in jesus name let it be done oh god on earth as it is in heaven do it only what you can do today, Jesus. Come on, church, let's worship him. Let's magnify that name right now. Come on, we are entertaining angels unaware right now. We are entertaining Jesus Almighty right now. Woo! Come on, whatever you have need of, he can supply. Whatever you have need of, he can supply. You may not feel like he loves you today, but can I tell you, he loves you more than you love yourself. He loves you so much, he died for you. And by his stripes, you are healed in the name of Jesus.
Come on, church. Let's flow in the spirit. Amen. Amen.
hands all across this place. Father, we love you. Thank you for your presence that we feel. God, we don't want to ever take your presence for granted. Lord, we just bask in your presence, Lord, for you can do more in five seconds than any of us can do in a lifetime. God, I've spoken today that hearts would be healed, minds would be clear today. God, I pray that we would have the mind of Christ. I pray, oh Lord, as David said, create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. Father, we thank you, Lord, for what we felt thus far. But Lord, you are not through. God, we thank you, Lord, for all that you mean to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Everyone say amen. Amen, amen, amen. Please remain standing for the reading of the word. I do know what time it is. I'll try to finish before you do. You have your Bibles, Micah chapter 7 and verse 8. Micah chapter 7 and verse 8. So good to see the Smiths today. God bless you guys. So good to see each and every one of you. So good to see my dear friends, the Edwards family. We welcome you to life in Tupelo. Amen. Can we give all of our guests a good hand this morning? Don't forget all the announcements they made mention of. I won't mention those, but I will say this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You guys got me yesterday. You surprised me big time. And uh, I'm grateful for each and every one of you, every text, every card, every dollar that was given to uh, the gift y'all got me. Uh, easy go golf cart. Thank you so much. I'm certainly humbled and honored. I love you, I appreciate you, and uh, I love doing life with you, amen? So thank you so much. Micah chapter 7 and verse 8. Rejoice not against me, O mine enemy. When I fall, I shall arise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. Can we ask the Lord to bless the word this morning? Father, we come to you right now. God, I pray you would speak to every person under the sound of my voice. I pray you would increase and we would decrease. I pray, oh Lord, you would abound and we would be a base. Let somebody receive faith today. Let somebody be encouraged today. We give you glory and honor in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. Amen. You may be seated. As so most of you know, I was raised in Columbia, Mississippi and went to Columbia high school. Today at the football field, there is a statue in Walter Payton's honor. Walter Payton played football all four years of his high school career. He then went on to Jackson State University where no other universities in Mississippi recruited him. Not one from my Southern Miss Golden Eagles. Not one from the Mississippi State Bulldogs. Not even the Hotty Toddy Ole Miss Rebels. Not even the Alabama Crimson Tide. But Walter Payton in his college career went on to score 65 rushing touchdowns and broke the collegiate record. Payton was then drafted by the Chicago Bears as the fourth overall pick. And when he finished his career 13 years later, he finished with 16,726 rushing yards. He amassed numerous awards and was awarded the NFL MVP in 1977. And his team, the Chicago Bears, won the Super Bowl in 1985. He was inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame in his jersey. The number 34 was retired. And he will always be known as one of the greatest running backs in football history. Walter Payton ran 
for a little over nine miles in his career. I love math. And when you figure up his stats, you realize that even though he ran nine miles, he was knocked down every four yards. How would you like to run four yards and get knocked down? If that would have been the recruiting slogan, I doubt there would have been many, many takers. But the secret to the success was that he did not stay down. The secret was as he got up and he ran four more yards. He ran four more yards. It didn't seem like much, but at the end of his career, after running nine miles, he did it four yards at a time. Again, Walter Payton went down in history as one of the greatest running backs in the NFL, not because he never got knocked down, but because when he did get knocked down, he didn't stay down. He got up and he ran four more yards. One, two, three, four. He fell, but he got back up and he kept going four more yards. One, two, three, four. He fell, but he got back up and he kept running four more yards. And that's what I came to preach about today. Four more yards. Did he ever get hurt? Yes. Did he ever get some bruises in his life? Yes. Did he ever get discouraged? Yes. But in spite of the pain, in spite of the discouragement, he said, hey, buddy, you might have knocked me down, but I'll get up and I'll run again. I'll be your worst nightmare. I'll be the one who's tapping you on the shoulder with a grin on my face as you celebrate your victory and says, I'm still here. And some of you have been through some stuff in 2020 and in 2021, but you know what? You still here because you got up and you said, I'm going to run four more yards. Are you still in this game to win it? Are you still here committed to the cause? Are you still kingdom minded? Come on, somebody clap your hands to the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. Most of the time, touchdowns are often scored four yards at a time. Many of us are wanting that big break. I want to make my million dollars. We want that glory run. We want that 98-yard run back, but most of the game is played four yards at a time. And you know what? If you can just score or go four yards at a time, you can eventually get a first down, and you will eventually get a touchdown. There's nothing fancy about it. There's nothing glamorous about it. It's just grinding away a little bit at a time. And the greatest players are not the ones who come out, and the first time they get knocked down, they walk off the field, and they say, I'm bored. I'm going to another game where things will be easier. They don't say, this is too tough for me. I'm out of here. There is too much opposition. I quit. The great players are the ones who jump up after getting knocked down, and they get back in the huddle, and they go another four yards, plodding through the mud, getting muddy, getting dirty, getting a black eye, getting a bloody nose. But you know what? They stay in the game and say, hi, I'm going to go four more yards. Pastor, give me the ball. I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to throw in a towel. I'll do what you asked me to do. I'll do what God's called me to do. I'm going to keep running just four more yards. I'm not going to drop the ball. I'm not going to throw in the towel, but I'm going to do what God has called me to do. Can somebody say amen? When I stand before the great judgment seat and my life is reviewed, let it be said that I ran nine miles even if I did it four yards at a time. I might have got knocked down 4,000 times in my life, but the key is I got up 4,000 and one times. Can somebody say amen? Ecclesiastes 9 and 11 says the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong but it's to he that endureth to the end. Amen. Hebrews 12, 1 and 2 says, let us run with patience. How I many you like that word today? Don't pray for that. You do, trouble's coming. 
Let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. The race is not to the swift, but to he that endureth, E-T-H, you gotta continue to endure to the end. Paul, and looking back over his life in 2 Timothy 4 and 7, it says, I have fought a good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. You have to fight before you can finish. No matter how hard the way gets, we have got to fight to the finish. Can somebody say amen? The Greek word for fault literally means to engage in conflict. And considering that Paul... When he wrote this, Paul was chained to a Roman soldier. When he wrote this epistle, picture that in your mind this morning. He was chained to a Roman soldier when he wrote this epistle. It would have been easy for him to make such an analogy. I didn't do it glamorously, he's saying, but I did it four yards at a time. I didn't do it without stumbling a few times is what Paul is saying, Brother Michael Colbert, but I got back up and I kept running. He's saying it was a fight. The enemy didn't lay down and let me run over him, but I did it. I finished. I made heaven my home, but I did it four yards at a time. There are some that will not finish. There are some that will throw in the towel. The Bible says in the last days there will be a great falling away. Life is tough and it's getting tougher by the day. Does anybody know what tomorrow is? Monday. Got one smart man in the room. <laughs> History tells us that Napoleon failed at his invasion of Russia on a Monday. The Titanic sank 100 years later on a Monday. President Ronald Reagan was shot, yes, on a Monday. Monday is the worst day of the week for the James Met Christian for the production of automobiles. You might want to ask when you buy one which day of the week it was produced. <laughs> I got some that came in on Friday, I believe. Monday is the worst day for a job interview. Men, I hate to tell you this, but more men die of heart attacks on Monday than any other day. We talk about Blue Mondays. We talk about rainy days and Mondays get me down. And it seems the attacks of the enemy can be relentless. It seems lately that every day seems like a Monday. The enemy has come against our minds with doubt. And in March of 2021, the enemy released the spirit of fear on us. The enemy has come against us with worry and anxiety and despair and depression. He has come against our families to divide us and splinter us. He has attacked the pulpit, but he's also attacked the pew. He's attacked the young, but he's also attacking the old. But where sin does abound, grace does much more abound. We just have to keep running four more yards. Let me share two things with you real quick. I won't be long. Two things this morning about running four yards at a time. Number one this morning, it's not glamorous. In fact, it can be rather boring. Most of us have a problem with boredom. We can handle enemies. We can handle adversity. But oftentimes, pure old boredom brings us down. An idle mind is the devil's workshop. I don't think that's in the Bible, but I've been told that my whole life. Ecclesiastes 9 and 9 says, Enjoy life, all the days of this meaningless life. 
that God has given you under the sun all your meaningless days for this is your lot in life and in your toilsome labor under the sun. Our days can seem meaningless many times. We get up, we get dressed, we go to work, we eat, we sleep. We get up, we get dressed, we go to work, we eat, we sleep. Israel's greatest test was enduring the monotony of eating manna for 40 years. David was anointed king over Israel, but after that, he had to go back to the pastures to tend sheep. Jesus was baptized, and then he had to go back to the wilderness, and many people, they want the glory, but they don't want to pay the price of just grinding away in anonymity to reach the goal. Many people want the glory, but they don't want to work for it. Too many singers want to sing, but they don't want to push back the plate to fast for a move of God. And let me say today, you won't hear any more anointed singing. You can go far and wide. I'm so glad we've got singers that pray and fast and want a move of God in this service. Too many preachers want to preach, but they don't want to spend the hours in the word that it takes time to preach. More often than not, we move into our destiny four yards at a time when no one is broadcasting our exploits. We're laboring in obscurity. We're just grinding away. It's boring. It's uneventful. It's not flashy, but it's the way to victory. If you study the life of David, you'll find that before he entered the stage of the Valley of Elah, with the eyes of thousands of spectators focused intently on his performance, that he won two battles when no one was even watching. David's first victory didn't happen in front of thousands. His first victory came in private. He killed a lion when nobody was watching. He killed a bear when nobody was watching. There was no fanfare. There was no audience. There was no cheerleaders on the sidelines shouting, David, David, he's our man. If he can't do it, nobody can. There was nobody saying that when he was fighting the lion and he was fighting the bear. It was just him his enemy, and his God. I'll tell you, when you're fighting your fight, most of the time, the band ain't playing. When you're pressing to your victory, the band ain't always playing. But we need to learn to press on, even though it's not glamorous, even though it's not flashy, even though no one's singing your praises. I am a soldier in the army of my God. The Lord Jesus Christ is my commanding officer, and the Bible is my code of conduct, faith, Prayer and the word are my weapons of warfare. I have been taught by the Holy Spirit. I have been trained by experience. I have been tried by adversity and I have been tested by fire. I am a volunteer in this army and I am enlisted for eternity. I will either retire in this army or I will die in this army, but I will not get out. I will not sell out. I will not be talked out of it. I will not be pushed out of it. I am faithful. I am reliable. I am capable. I am dependable. And if God needs me, I am here. If you believe that this morning and that's your testimony, clap your hands to the Lord. You may be seated. If he needs me in Sunday school to teach children, to work with the youth, to help adults, or just sit and learn, he can use me because I am here. I am a soldier. I am not a baby. I do not need to be pampered. I do not need to be petted, primed, pumped up, picked up, or pepped up. I am a soldier. No one has to call me to come to church. No one has to remind me. No one has to write me. No one has to invest me. No one has to entice me. No one has to lure me. I am a soldier. I am here. If that's you this morning, clap your hands to the Lord. I'm skipping over so much y'all need to hear. Come on now. I am more than a conqueror. And I will always triumph. 
Because God said, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Devils cannot defeat me. People cannot disillusion me. The weather cannot weary me. Sickness cannot stop me. Battles cannot beat me. Money cannot buy me. And governments cannot silence me. And hell cannot handle me. Because I am a soldier and I'm going to fight when no one notices. But hell will notice. My enemy will notice because I'm a fighter. I'm a soldier. And the last point. Y'all may be seated. The last point about running four more yards. It's discouraging to run four yards and get knocked down. It's discouraging. We're tempted to lay there and say, what's the use? I've been knocked down again. I can't take this much longer. I can handle the disappointment of getting my hopes up only to have them dashed. But Paul Paul learned to forget the things that were behind him and to press on. Listen to me this morning. It will do us well to forget those who have betrayed us. Forget about them. It would do us well to forget those who sought to destroy us. It would do us well this morning to forget those who have offended us and to press on. This morning, we all have failed. Every one of us. Sometimes it seems nothing goes right in our lives. The fabled Midas had the problem of turning everything he touched into gold. The Midas touch. How many of you heard of that? We want to call time out. Sometimes it seems that disaster, everything we touch instead of turning into the Midas touch turns into a disaster. We want the merry-go-round to stop that we can get off. It seems like you just can't get things together or get ahead. In your finances, no matter how hard you work, you can't just seem to make ends meet. There's more month at the end of the money. Children, you've tried to raise your children right, but they just seem to grow more rebellious. Your marriage, you've tried to keep the marriage together, but it seems you're drifting further apart. Spiritually, the devil always seems to be getting the best of you. You want to live right and do well, but you keep stumbling and falling, and it's so tempting when things are going wrong to just quit, but we have to endure our failures and just keep moving on four yards at a time. R.H. Macy failed seven times at Macy's store before his store finally caught on in New York City. Babe Ruth, the first home run king, struck out 1,330 times. I drive a Ford. Some of you are Ford and Chevy people, but Henry Ford, he forgot to put a reverse in his first car. He had to be careful where he stopped. Albert Einstein, one of the greatest minds of our time, failed his first college exam. Y'all all came to church this morning on some tires. Charles Goodyear, he was in prison for the debts he incurred while developing his invention. It took him two years to secure the money to perfect his invention of vulcanizing rubber and creating the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company. We must not quit because of our failures. We must not quit because of our frustrations. And I'm sure that Paul had the devil talking to him in his ear, trying to make him give up, reminding him of things that he had been through. He had been shipwrecked. He had been in prison. He had been beaten. He had been stoned. He had been snake bit. He had been forsaken. And sometimes you think you have been forsaken. We have the enemy me, reminding us of our difficulties, our broken hearts, our betrayals, our burdens, and he's telling us not to keep going, but to give up. In closing today, please come to the music. Remember the words of the prophet that ring true down through the corridors of history, and they burst from the pages of God's word to us today in Micah 7 and 8. Rejoice not against me, O oh my enemy, for when I fall, I shall arise. 
When I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. Could we stand together this morning? How many of you are willing? How many of you are willing to get up this morning and run four more yards? I will not stop. I will not give up. I will not surrender. And if you knock me down, I'll get up and I'll run another four yards. And if you knock me down again, I'll get up and I'll run another four yards. And when we decide that we're going to keep going, even though we get knocked down every four yards, when we decide that we're going to get back up and run again, then we've entered into the realm of determination that will bring victory in our lives. I don't care how many times you failed this morning. I don't care how many mistakes you've made. You're here today. You're here today. And God brought you here. It's not by accident. It's not coincidence. I don't care how many times I've been knocked down in the past. I'm going to get up and I'm going to run another four yards. I tell every preacher in this building today, keep on preaching, preacher. I tell every singer today, keep on singing, singer. I tell every teacher today, keep on teaching, teacher. We got to keep running. We got to keep fighting. We got to keep working. We got to keep praying until we cross that finish line. Because heaven is my home. I'm just passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. I got a father up there that's waiting for me. I didn't have that a month ago. You've got loved ones that are up there. We can't quit. We can't throw in the towel. We got to keep that small tucked in our arm and we're not, not going to let anybody knock it out of us. I'm going to get up and I'm going to keep running four more yards. And if you're willing to do that today, I know all of us have made mistakes, but if you're willing to do that, say, Pastor, I'm committed to do what you preach about today. Will you step out of your pew in closing today? Will you come to this front? Will you lift your hands? We will never give up. Heaven is my home. I'm going to make it through. If that's your yes. prayer today, step out of your pew and come to this front. If you need the Holy Ghost today, God will fill you with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody. Worship as she sings this morning. Come on.
We've got those trials. Temptations come our way. Come on, hallelujah. Amen. Pray with your brother and your sister right now. You never know what they're going through. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Believe that? My dad made it to heaven. It was worth every time he got hurt. It was worth every bruise that he had. It was worth every discouragement that he encountered. I promise you, when he heard him say, well done, thou good and faithful servant, nothing else mattered. It didn't matter how many times he failed. It didn't matter how many times he made a mistake. What mattered is hearing him say, well done, thou good and thou faithful servant. Amen. Most touchdowns are not scored on run backs. Most touchdowns are not scored on 98-yard pass plays. Most touchdowns are scored on four yards at a time. If we can just keep moving forward, picking up one foot and putting it in front of the other, if we can just keep doing that, I believe, Brother Moore, one day we're going to hear him say, well done. Amen. We don't know when our number's going to be called, but if we'll just keep moving forward. I believe we'll hear him say, well done, thou good and thou faithful servant. Can we clap our hands to the Lord this morning? Amen, 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 amen. Don't drop the ball. This football's a little tattered here, but it still works. This is Gentry's football. I called Dale and asked Gentry if he had one. He brought me one. I didn't even have one. But I pray we can carry the ball to victory. Amen. This is the greatest thing ever going, living for God. I promise you, don't quit. The Bible says there's going to be a great falling away, but I pray today, Lord, I know that's going to happen, but I pray here at Life at Jupilo that we as a family stay connected, we stay committed, and Lord, let us all hear you say, well done. I don't want anybody in this church falling by the wayside. That's the reason I preached that sermon this morning. Amen? We're in this together. I need you, and you need me. Can we clap our hands to the Lord today? So good to have Taylor and Tammy today. Thank you guys for being here. Amen. So good to see Bill and Judy today. Can we welcome our guests? Welcome folks to life at Jupilo. Amen, amen, amen. We got folks joining the church each and every week. That's what it's about. So good to have the Birches here today. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. Amen. Amen. Uh, we have a prayer request here. Certainly stretch your hands forth this morning. Father, right now, if you would stretch your hands forth right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.